from... You will get addicted. No! <laughs> you, you, will, you will get a good effect from hearing the word of God. There's going to be a point where if you don't watch us one day, you're going to start getting the shakes. You're going to start getting <laughs> yeah. cold sweats. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Cast. I am Spencer Cardia. And I am a cicada in disguise. Ooh, 17 year cicada. And this here is Frank looking a little satanic today. That's um, stereotyping. Really? <laughs> well, guess what, guys? I got the shades on today. We both have the shades on today because the Holy Spirit is shining bright. I can't see. The flame, the flame of the Holy Spirit, it's hurting my eyes. It is. You know what happens when people saw God in the Bible? I'm blind. No. Well, in a way, no. They fell to their knees and oh. they covered their faces right. because the, the light was too bright. Right. But they didn't have polarized Ray-Bans at the time. <laughs> so I just wonder, I wonder if Moses, yeah. when he went to the burning bush, had he had these bad boys on, would he have been able to? Why was... Oh, I don't think it's Moses. Moses, why was Moses or Abraham smart? Why? Because he knew a lot. That would be Noah. <laughs> <laughs> um, good one, nonetheless. Yeah, what's up, guys? Save it for Sunday. Save it for, save it for Noah Sunday. Sunglasses Not Noah off. Sunday. Christian meme review. Why would that be on Sunday? Oh, it was a joke. Yeah, like you made it funny. Yeah, Christian funny. It's spiritual funny on a Sunday. Spiritual funny. What's up, guys? Well, How... I'm a cicada. Okay. <laughs> just just because it's the cicada period. It's almost over. Oh, is it? Yeah. I haven't heard any. I know. Isn't that weird? I don't think it was our cicadas. No. I think we have the four-year cicadas. Listen, we have the every-year cicadas. They're annual the cicadas. annual cicadas. The annual cicadas. Well, okay. Other people, they have the 17-year cicadas. We have those, too. Every 17 years? Yeah. But it's right. not our 17th year? It is. If you look it up right now, Pennsylvania is one of the states that is being... I saw TikToks on it. Yeah. Um, I think all were where we're located to the point that yesterday, the president um, of the United States... Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. He's taking his first trip to Europe and the press plane couldn't take off because... The engines had filled with cicadas. Gross. Because DC is getting hit very hard. But um, yeah, there we are part of the seventeen year. Um, but but you're correct. I haven't heard them. I haven't heard them. Haven't seen them. And good, good riddance. Well, maybe they're like me, and they're they're in disguise because they don't want to be. They, they don't, don't want to be seen. <laughs> they don't want to be eradicated. Yeah, they're like okay. We remember what happened last seventeen years ago, guys. Yeah. Let's not have that happen again. Keep it down low. And it's funny leaves. that, you know, their name is Brood X. This this group is called. Well, what's funny about that? Because like you're you're being like X-Men or something like. You see sunglasses, you think X-Men? No, I'm thinking Men in Black. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean like secret. It sounds like Operation X or something. Brood X. Brood Try X. Try to find them. Good luck. Hey, um. What day is today? June something? June 10th. June 10th. It's my friend's birthday. Is it? Happy birthday, friend. Happy birthday, friend. I won't tell you who you are. You don't deserve a shout out. No, because they're probably... What are, what are they? A um, Are they a Gemini? Gemini. Yeah, so like... A two-faced... <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. Happy birthday to the one half of them that's nice. Yeah, happy birthday to the one half of them that's nice. <laughs> Happy birthday to the one of the twins. Right. And the Gemini. Um, it's no Taurus, but hey, uh, Gemini season, where are you at? Yeah. Um, June 10th, any holidays on June 10th? I don't know. Juneteenth is coming up. Juneteenth, uh, which I confused, I think, the other day. I don't know if, was it 14 or 16? I don't know. I don't know either. It's a teen. That's what happens when I you- it was June 19th. Well, that's, maybe you're right. See, that's what I was going to say. That's what happens when you make the, the name- just teen. not have the number yeah, yeah like, it could be it could be there's nine pot wait no there's 13 no uh, wait hold on let me do this oh boy 13 14 15 16 17 18 19. there's seven seven possible days and so i don't remember uh, i don't forget fourth of july I, or cinco de mayo no i don't yeah so um, <laughs> i didn't want for a name change probably not that's okay you know what 
It's my fault for not knowing. Just celebrate every team. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're celebrating one day. I'm celebrating seven. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. Beyond that, has anything happened since yesterday? Beyond, beyond yesterday? No. Uh, maybe. Who knows? I think it got a little t- teeny tiny bit cooler. You know, it's been raining. It's I been came swampy. back. swampy. I came back from Colorado and it's like, okay, well, guess what? Came back from Colorado and now I'm coming back to Pennsylvania summer. Not technically because it hasn't been the solstice, but I'm like, it's June. And then I come back and it's a week of rain and I'm like, eh, that's all right. Yeah, I, think, I said that's all right. I think there was another eclipse or something with the moon. Uh, I don't know. No. I saw someone's Instagram. Maybe it was an old shot. I think it was like last week. No, I knew that big thing because I talked about you it. You thought there'd like... be two eclipses in two weeks? Oh, yeah. Why would there be another moon? Well, there's a lot of moons. Well, there's one moon, but it comes out a lot. <laughs> How many moons does Earth have? All right. I can't see you guys. Take that off. And I want to see you guys. Okay. Um. So it's thursday um walk through thursday whoa all right. what you, you always just throw it out cut there that out. Cut no it out. i'm not cutting it out i want everyone to sh- shame 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 it's a special day oh, and, right. and when you call out the name listen that's when the intro somebody went in. to colorado okay yeah and i'm out of practice yeah, i don't know I what to, to do i don't know what I to came say back a new man um, and obviously, my co-partner here has taken a little vacation herself. I'm a mental thinking, vacation. Yeah, I don't know how we do it. I don't know. <laughs> it's Walk Through Thursday! <laughs> Would you please roll the intro? Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What is... Going on, guys. It is walk through Thursday, our favorite time of the year, and what we do. Why do you say year? It's a weekly event. There's, there's fifty two of fifty two days of the year are our favorite time. Favorite times. Favorite times of the year. It's our favorite times of the year. What walk through Thursday is to our new subscribers, I will tell you. We open up the Bible. Hey, Bible, what are you doing so open? <laughs> and we pick a verse or a line or a paragraph, whatever we are feeling like, whatever we have time for. Yeah. And we break it down. Yeah. We grab the sledgehammer of knowledge and we break it down. Yeah. Paragraph by paragraph. Yeah. I'm talking sentence by sentence. Line by line. Yeah. Word by word. <laughs> And That's we take it. we and requests, and we take requests. We take requests, okay? We do. And we have done, we have done um, viewer requests in the have, past. We have, and we've enjoyed those thoroughly. Mm-hmm. And so, t- what today's about is we slow it down. We say, "Hey guys, reading the Bible." Oh, you throw a whole passage at me. You say, "Oh, well, in your in your Instagram bio, it says John three sixteen. and then I'm sitting here like. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure I've read the Bible. I've, I've read John three sixteen. No, no, we don't take it at face you know, value. It's interesting. I think it's John three sixteen. Is that the really, really famous one? I don't know. It just came to me. Intuition. This but is I, John three sixteen. Kind of cool, isn't it? I, if it's the famous one, the one that people hold up at football games and everything. If I'm wrong, anyway, to talk about a different um, YouTube channel, Bible Unboxed. Bible Unboxed. Shout out. Watches the meme reviews. They did, yeah. Um, they did a. I think we also follow them on Instagram. They did an interesting little piece on it about uh, when it rose to popularity. Oh. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Conti- it wasn't the continuous from the beginning of time. The most favorite Bible verse. How society and um, trends and people change, and how when that changed and when it became super popular. And um, you know who really made it popular? I think um, Tony Romo, maybe. Tony Romo is he a football player? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you could look that up. It was a good little video I watched. That is interesting, you know, because there's a lot of Bible verses that everyone uses. And it's like, was that always was the twenty third Psalm always popping? Right. Or did someone use it at a funeral and then everyone was like, yeah. "This is kind of popping." Right. I don't know. I'm sure it took a while because before when things were in Latin, it True. probably wasn't as um as this trendy. Yeah. And then you know, mass yeah, and right. stuff switched to English, and then people started saying, "Hold on." Right. That's got a little English ring to it. You're right. That's a really interesting point. Probably people don't know about that. My father, 
uh, learned, the great Thomas McDonald, <laughs> the great Tommy Mac, um, learned the church. His um, whole church experience as a child was in Latin, and he had to learn it in English in America in what the fifties. Let's say the fifties. Um, I could be wrong with those numbers, but what I'm saying is, we're not talking like, oh, they of course they used to speak Latin in church in the 1600s. No, it was recent. You know, people who if they're Catholic. They learned um, all their prayers and they yeah. learned the mass in Latin. It was of English. I took stained glass in in college. That was my major, and one of the important, most important things about stained glass in the churches was you could see the Bible stories as photo pictures because mm. a lot of times you weren't really because like there was oh. a belief, especially in the Catholic Church, that mass was meant to be given in Latin. Like, yes, I know that was the Lord's language, if you will. Yeah, and which. Doesn't really make sense because, right. you know, there was in the Bible through time, a lot of different languages going on. You had Hebrew, right, right. you know, Latin, probably more than that. But they stuck with Latin. So people would look at the, you know, the, the signs of the cross and the, the Christmas story on the walls. And it was great. It was a great thing. Wow. But I guess there's no need for stained glass anymore because we all know the stories. I love stained glass. Big stained glass guy. Right. So, yeah. So, walk through Thursday, our favorite time of the week. Except for one word Wednesday. Or fun Friday. And fun Friday. Or meme review. (laughs) Top, definitely top four. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And as. But it is the heart of our podcast. It's the heart. It's the center. It's the, um, keystone, if you will. It is. So, I don't, I also, hey. I also never know what the verse and is. And don't tune out at tune. this point. Like, oh, that's what they're doing today. Because it's still super Tomorrow's fun. Tomorrow's fun Friday. No, but today is even... Doing it is fun. It's fun. You'll like it. Yeah. Stick around. If you don't like it, just keep coming back until you start to like it. It's it like I didn't like coffee when I started drinking it. <laughs> and so I just kept drinking it until now I'm like, oh. I like coffee. You know, I was going to say that's not a good example because like, why would we be an acquired taste? But let me tell you. <laughs> We're an acquired taste. But let me tell you. So you didn't like the coffee, but you you kept drinking the coffee. Why? Because it, I need the energy. You get you get a good effect from it. I got addicted. You will get a good effect from. You will get addicted. No, <laughs> you, you will you will get a good effect from hearing the word of God. There's going to be a point where if you don't watch us one day, you're going to start getting the shakes. You're going to start getting <laughs> yeah. cold sweats, and you're going to say, "We're going to have hi." It's like Sponge, Crook and Crow Rehab. SpongeBob is I need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I 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 need it. But it'll be about Crook and Crow. Okay. What's the Bible verse today? Yeah. I, know, I know you're very specific about. Yeah. The- I like just talking to my people real quick. All right. I'll just let you read the um. The actual Bible verse, and then I'll give you a, uh, a little background. A back, background. A little background. Okay, we got walk through Thursday, June tenth. Ooh, Job. We talk about. Is this just the Job podcast? I don't know. I just love him so. Yeah, poor guy. It's written for. I saw this thing on Instagram, and it said, "Life is misery, but you don't have to be miserable." And I understand that life is beautiful, nature, count your blessings, happiness, joy, ba- new- newborn babies and cupcakes. All that stuff. But we're all at any one time going through misery. And so the book of Job is... Misery. No, it's... um, Yeah, misery loves company. Job is the company. Job is the company. Okay. It's a new international version. You might see us reading the new international version on a lot of our walk through third... <laughs> Sorry. On a lot of our walk through Thursdays, and that's just because it's comprehensive. Today is not about singing a song in the King James Version, Old English. Mm-hmm. It's about understanding. Yeah. So this is Job six ten. Wait, what? Did you did on purpose. I did. <laughs> Today is June tenth, also known as six ten. Ha ha ha! Can't get anything past him. Then I would still have this consolation. My joy in unrelenting pain that I had not denied the words of the Holy One. Facts. So, right? So it's short. It's like, what is this? Why would you give me 
just one sentence. Um, and why? Because it's 610. And I thought it was fun. All right. So um, the I'll give you the rest of the context of right before why he's saying that right okay. there. But but first, let me just tell you really, really, really quickly about the book of Job and why it's so important and why it's more than just knowing that it's um, this man in the Bible who suffered a lot, didn't lose his faith, and then was rewarded at the end. Um, the It's a story, okay? And um, to be real specific, he's upset and he's complaining, but he's complaining to um, his friends. Yeah. Okay? And the very last, so that's um, Job 6, which is chapter 6, right? The very last chapter is 42. And in 42, uh, God answers to him that he was correct. Job was correct. The friends were wrong. He also, in, in the epilogue of chapter 42, tells you how Job was rewarded, how he had the most beautiful daughters and he had um, riches and he had long life and he he had happiness. But the reason I want to bring this up to people, and I think it's important, especially for the kind of spirituality, Christianity that we talk about is, so when you're going to read this 610, when he's answering somebody, he's answering Eliphaz the Temanite, which is his friend. Friend. <laughs> you know, you have these friends who are trying to help you. The friend is basically saying, you know, you're probably being punished because you're a bad person because <laughs> that's what God does. He punishes bad people. Yeah. All right. So his friends are kind of trying to help, but also being like, well, be happy you're suffering because you deserve it. You deserve it. The... the reason I want to talk about that real quick is even though I've already been not so quick is because so in the very last chapter, chapter 42, God literally says, hey, Eliphaz and company, you were totally wrong to say what you said. Now you'll be punished. You don't know. <laughs> you don't you don't get it. Job gets it. Job gets it. Um, My boy gets it. And um, as a matter of fact, Job says our favorite line, which I my ears to hear and eyes to see. Um, he answers back to the Lord that Job gets it. His friends didn't get it. And then God says to Job, pray for these guys because they don't get it. Ooh. Okay. But if the Bible taken out of context, okay. which is what happens when people take the Bible out of context. Straight out of context. If you read the early book of, uh, in the early chapters of Job, and you're reading what Eliphaz was saying to Job, and you cut that and you say, oh, people are punished. People who are going through misery are being punished. So I do suggest you can pull, you can, like we're, we do every walk through Thursday, you can mm -hmm. pull tiny little phrases and, and use them and, and, and study on them. But be careful because... It's important to know the whole story. It's important to know the whole story. Yeah. If you pull what Eliphaz had been saying, yeah. you would you would be like, "Oh, I'm being punished." No, you're not being punished. So, the content, the little tiny two sentences before the one we're going to talk about, it's it's Job answering Eliphaz, um, and it's just it's not that much important, but it's um, it's just saying that Job is kind of tired and literally wishes he had the sweet release of death to stop what he's doing so yeah so he says oh that i might have my request that god would grant what i hope for that god would be willing to crush me to let loose his hands and cut off my life then i still would have this consolation consolation my joy is unrelenting pain that i have not denied the words of the holy one so job is just tired he's tired and he's over it he, he loves god he's, but he's like you know what if i'm being punished right and finish the job right and, and that was never what it was about. It was never what it was about. But again, I get a lot of, um, I can feel the temperature of the room and the society from Instagram. I was looking at someone's Instagram and they were talking about secondhand suicide, which is being so sad and so depressed and so dejected that you would like to die, but you will never kill yourself. Mm. So you hope for injury, illness, mm. or so that you won't be responsible for it. But it's just that complete desperation yeah. um job had it that's why i'm saying um he did <clears throat> so yeah i mean he like like obviously he was a man he had the ability to do it and that sort of even when he was being like release me from this flesh prison he was asking the lord like because he, he knew it was all god's timing he knew 
whether he's being punished or not. So it was like, release me from this and, right. and not, you know what? I'm taking matters in my own hands. Right. And um, then God was like, no, that's not what I want for you. Right. That's not what I want for you. And also, stop listening to these people. To these buffoons. Who are, who are telling you things that is not the relationship that I have with you. Yeah. And so that is the whole thing that I wanted to um to tell you in in advance. So it is a strange little um story that we're a st- strange little sentence that we're doing. Job six ten, four walk through Thursday. I don't think that's just a strange. No, okay. Sure, 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 so then tell me about it. Well, uh, Job six ten. Well, I, I think this one line could be summed up to Job's entire experience, or this one um. Well, yeah. a chapter, a paragraph, whatever. One, yeah, one line. One, one line. Verse ten. Then I would. St- okay, so blah blah blah. Basically, it starts off. The, the quick background is, he's like, "Hey God, would you just kill me?" Yeah. Obviously, I'm. I'm. This is happening to me. I'm Pe- being so. Even saints, Mother Teresa, people have said, "I, I know you think I can do it, but I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it." And but with asking the lord this he's putting the lord first still and he's saying it's up to you it's not up to me it's up to you whatever i go through and then it starts with then i would still have this consolation what is a consolation it's something that makes you feel a consolation prize you didn't win but it's something to comfort you in your time yeah. of it, it, yeah it's it, it's your it's something that you have you're not awarded something but it's right. like your con your comfort it's something like, to hold on to like, yeah you yeah, know, something yeah. To hold on to that my joy in unrelenting pain. So he's in unrelenting pain, but he's about to tell you his consolation prize, the the little joy in all of this is that I have not denied the words of the Holy One. And so that goes to the fact that he's not going to take matters in his own hands. He's always going to put the Lord first, but he's like, release me so that I can know that through all this, I, I still listen to you and right. I, I still followed you. So are you, uh, um, tell me, are you thinking that, is he saying there like, I have not denied the words of the Holy One. Is he saying yet? Like, I don't know how much longer I can hold on or, you know what I mean? Like he's saying, let me go now because as of, as of up to now, I haven't denied the. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I think in a way, like every day was such a struggle for him and like, he just, he couldn't bear anymore. And so it's like, please, like. You know, like, please fire me before I quit. Like, right, right, and he's right. Like, I don't want to quit because I love my boss. Right. But he's like, just please fire me. I can't do another day of this. Right. Like, make it your choice. Um, which sounds bad. And once again, I mean, I think a little context on this. We believe this is a symbolic story. We don't think that that the devil or God were played around. With yeah, the, toying yeah. around with with one of God's children. But we think it is a symbolic story to talk about the fact that god's not the one punishing us and even in our biggest struggles of an earthly life where things aren't always good they're bad things mentally physically externally that we can't help and through all that as long as we keep our faith god will be with us right and um he will reward us for keeping our faith even when we think we literally like, like here, like Job had, well, he had nothing left in the tank, nothing right. left in the tank. And then all his consolation prize of having nothing left in his physical tank was, I've not denied the words of you. Right. Yeah. It's really a contrast. Yeah. So it's one line with a few words, but the contrast of that middle piece, joy and joy isn't just like contentment or yeah. peace. It's joy in, and it doesn't just say pain. It says unrelenting pain. Unrelenting pain. So like when you go to the emergency room and they say, what kind of pain do you have? They want to know. Is it unrelenting. Like, unrelenting. That's what I'm going to say next time in the emergency room. <laughs> yeah. They probably, they probably go wide eyed. Yeah. <laughs> Triage un- will put you right. Yeah. Unrelenting. <laughs> so it's, so it's, it's the same as simultaneously joy, unrelenting pain. So. He's having them both at the same exact time. Yeah. Now, his joy is spiritual and his unrelenting pain is physical. Yeah. But um, in like when I said the very last chapter 
uh, of 42, um, Job does admit that he spoke of things he did not understand. So the whole time for the 41 other chapters where Job is complaining and and just wondering out loud and crying and yeah. screaming and, and wishing for death. In the end, when his eyes and ears are opened, he said, oh, yeah, you know, I these are things I did not understand. Um, and isn't that something that we can all take away from, you know? It's like in the darkest moments, everyone will, 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 would think what Job was thinking. You know what's happening in Job? He was like, his skin was just melting off and like right. he was just felt like he was on fire. And don't forget the friends who were yeah. telling him. Oh, this is your fault. <laughs> this is your fault. Um, And obviously not to that extreme, but a lot of us will get into these problems where we're like, you know, like a uh, tiger king, like I'll never financially recover from this. Right. <laughs> or like. Yeah, it's the end of the world. Like, there's this is it. Yeah. I, I, you know, and and then they say, um, you have to look at things in a broader perspective. Like, right. This too shall pass. Right. And all that. And then, how many times have you gone through something, and then eight months later, you're like, wow, I actually ended up in a better place. Right. I, I, I was ready to just give up back then. Right. And that's sort of what Job comes to the realization of, of like. Once you do get out of this hole that, right. that you're, you're in, you might be in a better. Um, Job was. He right. ended up in a better place, and and he looks back and he's like, "Yeah, um, and I'm sure he was very happy that he kept his faith and stuff because right. he was like, this, this. I didn't understand what, at the time, right? Why I was going through what I was going through, right? Now I understand, and now it's all gravy, and it." Goes to yesterday's podcast that we had on Colorado. Colorado. And if you go to the end of the podcast, like probably 20 minutes in or more, nah, probably just 20 minutes in, you talked about what guide you would follow Mm. on your path of life and that some of them are not for you. They're not bad people, but they're not for you. Yes. Um, And this goes right to that where Job's friends. We're trying to guide him, mm. explains they were trying to explain to him what God had in store for him or Yeah. And that was not appropriate that was not accurate. Yeah, I guess you know, this you can talk about that as well, is that be careful who you surround yourself by and who's telling you what. And they might be your friends, they might be fellow Christians. Yes. You know, like yes. people that you uh, assumed were part of your spiritual journey. And they're over here telling you, like, oh, you know when you do that, you're going against God, right? And, right. and I think this, if anything, it, it shows that personal relationship with one person and God. And it's like, don't let someone else condemn you. Don't let someone else. Because that's what they did. They condemned yeah. him. They said, you're getting punished. Right. And how many real, real, I, IRL, means in real life, people condemn other people. Right. And they say, Oh, well, yeah, you're probably having a bad go at it. You've been living like this. You've been doing well, this. Well, that's the thing. In, in, in here, it says that um, Eliphaz and I guess the other two uh, pro- provided a, a, a good case. Yeah. It, was, it was undeniable that, you know, when someone tells you, well, well, you did do that. And so that is why this is so. But it's still not. It possibly is still not the truth. Yeah. So don't let anybody but God tell you and yourself. Right. I mean. I think Job sort of, even though they provided a good case, like when he listened to himself, right? He said, "God, I'm with you. I'm with you 100." percent Right. And so don't let none of these naysayers, Hillab and Josab, what's her name? Eliphaz. Eliphaz and J- which I could be saying wrong, and I don't care, Faz. I don't care, Faz. Don't let them tell you nothing. No, and in the merc- all merciful God, in the end. Did he strike down Eliphaz and and no. company? No, he said. He said, Job, um, talk to him. Job, talk. <laughs> take care of your talk boys. Talk <laughs> to these boys before I. Or... He said, pray for them, and maybe you can invite them over to your big old beautiful house now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Imagine if like they if they got the treatment next, oh. and then Job comes over. Hey, you think you deserve oh, it? Oh yeah. No, nah, Job wouldn't do that. Job's no. a nice guy. Yeah. But guys. That was Walk Through Thursday. Thursday. We broke down the verse. It was Job 610 on June 10th. How'd you like that song? It was good. Thank you. 
and it was it was different. So for, for people who watched Walk Through Thursday last week, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. And guess what? Next week you'll see something totally different. <laughs> All right, Holy Spirit's back. Ah, ooh, ooh. Don't worry, these bad boys are polarized. All right, guys. Well, that has been Walk Through Thursday, our favorite time of the century. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is Fun Friday. It's go- it's gonna be fun. It is. So my first Friday as a new man. First Friday back from Colorado. First Friday back from Colorado. Be there or be square. Um, go 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 read the Bible or no, you know, go open the Bible. Just find a quick verse and say Kirk and Crow. Talk about this next week. Yeah. Um, submit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're using like the code words. Yeah, right. like, yeah submit. Su- submit. 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 <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Peace. Oh, God. Oh. Feeling like Job. All that, legs. All that hiking. <laughs>